have Major Jim Uchoff. He is the um, he actually started the Third uh, Battalion, Second Brigade, uh, Missouri Militia here. This is Eastern Missouri Militia. He actually started it five years ago, and he is uh, Army U.S. Army um, <coughs> Infantry. Uh, he spent most of his time at Fort Myers, Washington D.C. Uh, after his service in the Army, he served as a police officer and a firefighter in um, St. Louis and, uh, and St. Charles. So he's, uh, he's got all bases covered. Uh, this past Saturday, um, I met with uh, the local militia group, and that's where I met the major. Um, and we have several of our Oath Keepers in this group. Um, we have about five of us in this group who are uh, participating <coughs> in the militia. Um, but um, Major uh, Jim Yukoff Uch is uh, now going to uh, tell us about the militia. Mm -hmm. He'll give us a... <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, the, the Missouri militia is... We are a constitutional militia. We're not the local guys that get together and want to overthrow the government. We are legitimately recognized by the state of Missouri. Um, we're trying to get legislation passed to where we can own the name. We're try trying to get the, the, there's a stigma over the name militia. Everybody thinks of we're a bunch of bad guys. Um, right now there are five units that we are associated with in the state of Missouri and we're trying to start up two more, one in Cape Girardeau and one in uh, uh, Rolla. Kind of slow taking off. Uh, being volunteer, nobody wants to step up and do all the work. Um, I really don't remember five years ago how I got started. I got hooked up with a guy, and said, hey, what are you doing? He's, he says, well, I'm looking for someone to take over and start this unit. As well, I'll help you. Here you go. See, <laughs> he moved to Kansas and he's gone. So I made a, I took the list of people that he had, called them, we set up a meeting, and we started a unit. And we've been five years now. Uh, we've probably got actually about 30 members, 10 to 15 active. Uh, being volunteer, it's hard to, to get guys to come all the time. Uh, we try to train once a month. We mix it up. We train on uh, first aid, uh, firearms, search and rescue, communications. We've got five or six ham operators in our unit. Um, we work real close with the Kansas City unit, Springfield unit, and the Columbia unit. Uh, radio back and forth. The, the comms guys are always getting together. Um, we work at, we go to gun shows for recruiting and passing out information, getting people to know who we are and what we do. Um, we've been working with local law enforcement on different search and rescues. Um, we haven't gotten into any law enforcement yet, uh, but they're, we're working on that, trying to work with the local sheriffs. Uh, we were involved in a search and rescue out in um, Franklin County with the sheriff out there. Uh, we've been on standby for about three other search and rescues. We went down and we took, all of us went down to Joplin. Uh, we took the, we, our units took turns going down to Joplin so we weren't all there at one time. Uh, what did we take down here, about 10 guys? Uh, went down for the weekend. Uh, it was quite an experience for everybody. It, it, was, it was really sad. We also had a uh, reporter from the Riverfront Times contact me and ask if he could go along and do a story about the militia. He got down there, he forgot we were even there. He did a story on the devastation in Joplin. And about a month later, did a story on us. But it turned out all right. I was kind of skeptical about a reporter hanging around, but I think he did good. He got a few facts wrong, but he did okay. Um, we went up to uh, Belfont Neighbors after a tornado went through there, and we helped clean that up. They had tree service guys coming through there trying to charge these people outrageous amounts of money. 
to clean these trees up. And we went through there in the day, cleaned them all up, got them out to the curb. The mayor was there, the fire chief was there, the police chief was there. They were all working with us together. They were all very happy that we were there. Uh, I've got letters from all of them. Anytime they need anything, you know, they're on the phone to me. They call me. They, uh, I've met with them uh, several times. The sheriff out in Franklin County, I've been out there meeting with him. Um, the St. Charles County Sheriff knows who we are. It's hard. They, in the St. Louis area, they've got so many paid firemen and policemen and first responders that they really don't need us. So we're going to be the last ones that they call. Uh, but they still know we're there. They know we're training. We're in good standings with the FBI. I have them. I meet with them frequently. They come to our meetings. Uh, Missouri State Highway Patrol, we're in good standings with them. Uh, Missouri State Homeland Security, know those guys. Meet with them all on a regular basis. Most of our guys, every one of our guys goes through a background check, either by getting a CCW or going out to the highway patrol and going through their background check. I prefer the CCW because then it covers them with concealed carry and the background check. Um, pretty much open to anyone in the state joining the militia. Uh, according to the Constitution, everybody in the state is militia. Including women, right? Including women. Oh, yes, definitely. They're citizens. Everybody from sure. the 17 years old. Um, and and you, we, ha we have women in our unit. And they're not the cooks. They're not the clean up. They're, they're <laughs> right out there with us. You know, they're, they're in the searches with us. They're in cutting the trees with us. We, had a, we took a, a girl up there to Belfont neighbors, neighbors with us. She was out there with a chainsaw cutting trees and stacking wood and right out there with us. Um, yeah. Now, there, it says a, there's a age requirement of 18 to 64. I, I kind of don't agree with that because I've had guys, Vietnam veterans, come to me, want to do something. I'll find something for them to do. I'll find them a job. The sign-in sheet you pass around. They sit at a table and make sure everybody signs in. They can check weapons. They can hand out water. I'll take everybody. I thought, I'll, I thought there was a cutoff of 65, but you said 64. That's the first time it says 64, that. yes. What, what says 64? Um, the age uh, span was 1855 is what I had read. The, 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 yeah, the state, the state constitution. Oh, our state constitution? The state constitution and the United States constitution. Has an age? Has an age, yeah. yeah. Um, we have these little hand handbooks that we go by. It, it's got everything in here about us. Um, in the bylaws, it even states. But so, so the constitutional authority of the militia from our U.S. Constitution would come from the Second Amendment, I guess, right? Is that no, 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 no. You maybe, you'll, maybe you'll get to that. I mean to interrupt. It's covered in the Second Amendment, but actually your, your state militia is governed by your individual states. Um, each one is different. Each state has a different. There are some states that, Ill, that they say it's illegal to have a militia. I don't get that because the Constitution of the United States says you can have one. You should have one. You may know more on this than I do. Correct me if I'm wrong. But my understanding is historically the militia is any able-bodied citizen that is not in the military. So exactly. If you're if you're an adult, 17, 18, uh, male, female, not in the military. Some people would argue, especially years ago, over 65, you're no longer so much able-bodied. Okay, and so that's where the, the 65. Who determines if you're able or not? Right. right. <laughs> you know, I, I had a, another Vietnam veteran come to me, and he both legs. Sure. He's in a wheelchair. I'll find something for him to do. I, you know. Absolutely. I don't. I'm not going to tell him. No, you're worthless. You can't. You can't join us. Yeah, I'll find something for you to do. Come on. You know, I, there's a lot of things he can do. And he can teach us some of the things that he knows. And so that's one of those things going back to the Second Amendment and the wording in it, uh, talking about militia. If you're not in the army, if you're not enlisted, you are the militia unless you're right. uh, a minor or a senior citizen. Now, according to the the the, um, the federal and the state statutes on militias, the National Guard is the organized militia. Right. 
We are the unorganized militia. The irregulars. And between you and I, I think we're a little more organized than on some <laughs> National Guard units I've seen. <laughs> but that's you know that's neither here. They they are governed by the the government. Um, one of the problems that we're having with getting this legislation passed is where do we draw the line on control? We don't want them to have control over us. Right. We would like to get funding. Uh, we're trying to get it to where if we get called out, like say Joplin, we get reimbursed for our gas, food, that kind of thing. Um, you know, guys take time off from work to do this because it's volunteer. Be cautious with federal funding. If they're paying you, they control you always. Oh yeah, yeah. That's quite what keeps the state. Yes, okay. state level. Okay, misunderstood. State, in keep it the state level. Or in terms of the legislation they talked about, are uh, you also putting in there uh, intelligence that you'll be as up to date on that as well? That's going to be. <laughs> that's that's probably one of those things that we have to work out with them. Yeah, how much they're going to they, they will tell us. What we're looking for is we're looking for recognition. Uh, we're, we're looking for them to say, these guys are okay. okay. And if we need them, we'll call them. We're, we're okay with calling them, uh, that, that kind of thing. Um, there are other groups out there that, <laughs> right. you know, they, they're their own thing. Okay? And I don't associate with those guys. I, I've had FBI guys come to me and say, hey, can you give me that? Nope. I don't know those guys because I don't associate with them. Find them on your own. <laughs> all my guys are on the up and up. They've all had background checks. I know them. Yeah. I know Mark. Um, these two guys I brought with me tonight, Brett and Jeff Hafek, they've, they've been with me for almost five years. I know them. Um, all my guys are on the up and up. I won't let anybody come into this unit that'll get me put in prison or do anything to get me put in prison, I don't want to go to jail. Go to jail. That's not what I'm doing this for. Okay? Um, we teach, we, we try to teach the best we can uh, different subjects like first aid, firearms. We don't make doctors, but we have doctors in our militia, in, in certain units, and these doctors share things with us. Um, but it's life or death situations. Uh, some of us know how to do IVs. Some of us know how to do sutures. Some of us know how to do tracheotomies. We've been into the classes. Don't mean that I'm a professional at it. Don't mean that I can do it for a living. But if it's a situation uh, like Joplin, where we come up on our, our, our search and rescues, if we're the, we're the ones that find the person we're looking for, we know what to do. We know how to deal with them. We know the first day. We know to stabilize until professionals get there when that that's what we do any other questions mark you look like you're at you're you're dying to ask <laughs> no me questions. something no no okay um i brought my little handbook here with me um one of the sections that we have in here is uh who we are and who we are not and this is a lot of information that we put out we do have a website the number one thing is we are not anti-government. I might be anti what the government, in, in the direction the government's trying to lead us, yeah. but I'm not anti-government. I believe there needs to be a certain form of government. Mm -hmm. right under here. Do you believe in the Constitution? Yes, sir. Here's the thing I shut people down on that. You cannot be pro-Constitution and anti-government. It's one or the other. Constitution says there needs to be a government. Exactly. You are have you, to have a government. Are you aware of anybody in Illinois taking on a similar project? No. Okay. You just need to move to Missouri. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> 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 I need to keep you away from my girlfriend. You'll be uh, tag team me on that one. Uh, now, there, there are militia units in Illinois that we associate with. They come and train with us. Okay. Um, they're, they're pretty decent guys. Okay. I don't know why they live in Illinois. But... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, from what they tell me, it's a com it's a communist state. Oh, yeah. but <laughs> it, it fits a lot of the criteria. Um, sure. I'm glad to see they finally got their CCW thing on yeah. in the works. I'm digging the details. You won't be so impressed, yeah. but we could save that one for later. They got to start. Yeah, the, the door is open. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, as a unit, everybody we believe, as the Constitution says, 
We believe everybody has their own, the, their right to their own opinion. Who they should be, who, who they feel should be in our, in control of us. As a unit, we are apolitical. We don't back any certain uh, person for any government office or anything like that. No, we stay neutral on that. Um, now, when we're in training and we're off <laughs> talking amongst ourselves, you know, we talk about things like that. But as a unit, we, we do not get involved in politics. Um, we're not racist. Anybody can join. Um, we have women. We have black guys. Everybody. Anybody that is a citizen of the state of Missouri and a non-felon can join. We can't allow felons because they can't be around firearms. Um, we've kicked that around because I don't believe some felons are really bad criminals, but they're felons. Um, so we're I not secretive. All of our meetings are open to everybody. Um, we're, they're open to the public. Open to law enforcement. I invite FBI. I invite Highway Patrol. I invite the local law enforcement to come to our trainings, come to our meetings. That way they can meet us. They can see what we do. They can see who we are. They can see that our weapons are legal. Um, and, and that's how they get to know us. We train once a month on different subjects. Uh, this year we're starting a new training program. Every three months we do a weekend. We go down to, a, we have a farm, a private farm. We go down there and we spend the whole weekend. And we just mix it up. We do all kinds, we try to do scenarios. We try to do um, all different kinds of, of different missions that encompass our, all of our training. We teach guys land navigation, how to read maps, how to read compasses. Um, and I don't take them out in the woods and get them lost, but we teach them how to do certain things. And we test them. Once a year, we have a joint training exercise, which is put on by the Kansas City unit. The colonel out there, he's former military. Um, he's retired military. He, he hosts it. He puts it on. And he invites all the units in the state, plus units from other states. We've had Texas. We've had Oklahoma, Arkansas, Illinois, guys from everywhere. But before he invites them, he makes sure that they're on the same level that we are. You know, he's real selective about who he brings. And when I told him that I was coming here tonight, he says, invite them. <laughs> we like the Oath Keepers. Invite them to our JTX. So you guys are all invited to come out to JCX in July. All right. Um, <laughs> I can get that information to Doc. He okay. can put it out to you. Uh, we get there. This year it's going to be in Springfield, or right outside of Springfield, Missouri. Uh, we get there on Friday afternoon. We set up a camp. Um, we have classes. This year is going to be t mostly testing on what we've been teaching over the year. Uh, we're going to we do force on force. We do um, the doc puts on a, a very good medical class. One year he got a bunch of pig necks from a, a, a slaughterhouse, and he had classes on tracheotomy showing you where to cut and how to cut and stick a tube in there. And we all got to do that. Um, the next year he did IVs. He does shock. He does everything. And he sets up a little mini hospital for that weekend. And last year we had two guys get overheated, a little dehydrated. So we practiced IVs. <laughs> what a great way to, to learn how to do that kind of stuff. Sure. And um, they set up a communications tent with all different kind of radios. I mean, these guys, talk, they're talking around the world on this stuff. They put up antennas, and they give classes on radios, communications. Uh, we teach hand signals. We teach the phonetic alphabet, military time, because that's all things you guys use on your, your ham radios and communications. Um, uh, oh, in the kitchen. We have a kitchen down there, and we eat too good for training. <laughs> There's guys that volunteer to do the, all the cooking. <coughs> he did it for a couple years. And we come home lazy and, <laughs> you know, and it, 
very good meals. And it's and it's a cheap weekend. I think we pay five bucks per meal. And that and and then I think the, the colonel asked for an additional five dollars for administrative costs, but and it's a lot of fun. We do night missions, we do guard duties, we do perimeter security and patrols and just we, we teach everybody all that kind of stuff. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, yeah, now going back to what you were saying earlier, uh, and I, I'm all for the Constitution, let's get down on But what happens when the federalities uh, constitutional legitimacy comes into question at the national level? <coughs> Do you have a plan for that? Yeah. But you have to remember, we're a state. Right? We're we state have to defend our state. We are. Okay? We yeah. put that and as our, our control. Like Doc was saying a while ago. Or, or I think it was Patrick was saying a while ago. Here just recently, the state of Missouri is telling the feds, stay out. Yeah. Don't come in here and try to enforce your gun laws. We won't allow it. That's right. That's back in there. We won't allow it. They're still voting on it? Yeah, it's coming up again. You know? Yeah. Um, and as citizens, that's what we have to do. We have to stand up for our rights. Okay? Um, you just, you can't lay down and let them run you over. You know, someone asked me the other day, he says, well, what would you do if you saw him kicking your neighbor's door in? Taking his guns, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I know my neighbor, so I know he's not doing anything illegal. Do I go out there and get involved? Cautiously. <laughs> 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 you know, you don't want to run out there screaming at him and everything like that, but find out what's going on. Yeah. Find out why they're in your neighborhood. Last election... In St. Charles, they voted to take away our sheriff's department, yeah, change it yeah. to a, pol a police department, yeah. okay? Well, when I first heard of this, I called a deputy that I know, and I said, what's, what's going on with this? He says, call me at home tonight, I can't talk right now. <laughs> so we got home, I called him, and he says, no, it's a bad idea. He says, the number one thing that makes it bad is they're taking the, the right of the citizens' vote away for sheriff. What they'll do is they'll appoint, if they go over to a police department, a board will appoint a police chief. The citizens can no longer vote on who their yeah. county official is. And then he's no. at the police board, not the citizens. That's right. Exactly. It, becomes, it becomes a federal entity. Right. right now, with the sheriff, the sheriff stands between you and your federal government. Mm -hmm. The IRS cannot come in and audit you without talking to the sheriff first. The sheriff, he has to have probable cause. So he comes to the sheriff, the sheriff says, let me look at it, and then I'll get back to you. Yeah. And they say, well, you want to assist? If I need your assistance, I'll call you. With a federalized police department, they say, go kick in Doc's door. <laughs> they go kick in Doc's door. Yeah, Mark, the go sheriff the sheriff stands between you. There, there are instances right now going on in Colorado yeah. where the federal yeah. government is trying to uh, procure land from the large landowners out yeah. there. They've already yeah. taken their cattle. They come out there, and the local sheriffs out there say, "Well, then you show up with your team. I'll go, go stand with my go stand against my squad team." Yeah. So yeah. you know you're, you're seeing these things taken. So you're finding out exactly who your sheriff is. Well, really your sheriff is a is a constitutional <coughs> person who is a people sheriff because he's elected by you. And he's he's a, he's the high authority here in the state now too. Yes. Just the highest. In the county. Yeah. In the county. In that county. If, yeah. If, if the president's limousine wants to come through St. Charles County and near to warm to come through there, he says, you find another way around here. <laughs> and that's just the authority that he has. Yeah. People don't realize that. And, and people need to understand that. That's why you really need to get back with your, with your St. Louis County Sheriff. You need to really get that sheriff back in the county out here. Any other questions about militia? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the handbook that you have, is that available for us tonight or no? I only brought one. What's the title of that? Um, this is just, is this just something that we made? Uh, my sergeant major put this together. Actually, everything that is in this little handbook is on the website. Okay. The website on St. Louis. Yes. Um, where do you guys meet and how often? Once a month. Okay. Um, actually, for the next few months, we're getting ready to step it up to two meetings a month. And it depends on what training we're doing. If we're doing a classroom training, we try to get inside, uh, especially this time of year. Uh, the last couple of months, we've been out at Bush Wildlife. We go out there and we sit out by the lake. Uh, we've done some land navigation out there, uh, set up courses around the lakes and through the woods, and I give the guys maps and compasses, give them headings, and take off. And 
you should be back here in about an hour. Um, when we do things like first aid, I'd like to do them in a, inside in a classroom. We, we, wherever we can find a building, it's pretty tough finding a place sometimes, yeah. especially if you tell them <laughs> militia. Yeah. You know, uh, we don't care a whole lot about right here. So if you have a weird place, I'm sure I can make that happen. Well, thank you. I had a place over in Harvester, and the guy sold it. Oh. So we lost that. I would like to correct, and I know it's hard to do because of church and such, but if you notice that I haven't been to meetings in a long time on Saturdays because I work Saturday days, you can keep that in mind when you plan the training if I can attend more of your district. <laughs> Not just on Saturday days. It, it, it's <laughs> hard. <coughs> what I tried doing for a while, and, and I figured out it didn't work, is we'll have meetings on days that suit you. Well, then they don't suit him. Right. You know? And so who do I... You know, so what I what I what I have to do is, this is when we're having a meeting. If you can make it, great. If you can't, maybe I'll see you at the next one, or hopefully, you know. Um, so what we're doing, and that's one reason we're we're going to two meetings a month now, is the guys can make it this this weekend, but not next weekend. Yes, sir. Does something like this work for you guys, maybe, and put it on the website? Um, possibly. That way, the people who do miss them. If you'll tune in. This is good. Yeah, that's not the same. But <laughs> this is not getting your hands on, this is not field stripping a rifle. Okay? Um, you can watch it. You can watch it on YouTube. But if you don't do it, mm -hmm. you're not learning it. Yeah. Okay? And that's one thing that we like to do is we like to hands on training. Would you like me to field strip in my AK 47? <laughs> sure, go ahead. Oh, okay. I didn't know if that was. You know, everything's AR-15s or whatever. I've got both. I can field dress them both. Um, and, and that's another thing, too. On our website, if you'll see on there, it, it says that every militia person should have a battle rifle. And they recommend ARs, AK, FN. I don't care what your battle rifle is. My restrictions are that you know how to operate it. You can load it, fire it, unload it, and clean it. That's all. I don't care if you have a shotgun. I don't care if you have one that was your grandpa's from the or your great grandpa's from the Civil War. As long as you know how to operate it, right, and take care of it. Uh, I have guys with shotguns. I have guys with thirty out six deer rifles. If I had funding or a way to get weapons and could issue them to you, then I would say you all have to have the ones I give you. But I don't. We have to get them on our own. So whatever you can, whatever you can afford, whatever you'd like, you know, some guys like the AK over the AR. ARs are pretty complicated. They're, you know, they, they get dirty, they jam up. AKs don't. Um, ammunition. Some guys like a, the, the cheaper ammunition. Right now it's all pretty expensive. <laughs> um, whatever you, anything else? I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. Right, Thank you. On behalf of the St. Louis St. Charles uh, Oath Keepers, I'd like to present you as appreciation for speaking to us tonight. Uh, one of our Molan Labe DVDs, which I think you'll like because this is uh, primarily about the militia. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, as you know, with our civilization preservation uh, program, we have a lot of overlap here with what we're doing as Oath Keepers nationwide uh, with what the militia is doing. Um, and uh, as I've mentioned before, rather than try to reinvent the wheel, we can uh, uh, dovetail with some of these um, other groups like the like the militia who I, I couldn't think of a better group to dovetail with mm -hmm. uh, and we could take advantage of, uh, of their expertise uh, and do training on some of the things that we need to do as, as far as the scouting portion uh, of our civilization preservation like uh, land navigation uh, also first aid firearms I mean the whole program is right there in the militia uh, and so um, you're going to be hearing more uh, about that from uh, from Oath Keepers, so I'll, I'll keep you uh, informed on all that.